Visit sayarite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. The Ultrafeed dust cover made from waxed canvas works with your Ultrafeed in the collapsible sewing table, the industrial sewing table, the leatherwork sewing package, and even the industrial carrying case. These sew-it-yourself kits are available in blue, red, and sage colors. These kits come with a pattern. The first step is to pattern the wax canvas. Now we're going to glue the pattern to the fabric and you can use a Super 88 or Super 77 spray adhesive. The Super 88 is less expensive. You could also take the pattern and pin it to the fabric if you'd like or use weights on it. So I'm going to spray the backside where the patterns are. And this does get a little bit of overspray on your, uh, in your working area. So you may want to do this in a garage or someplace you're not that concerned about getting overspray around your work surface. Okay, once that's done, you do have a little bit of working time. We're going to spread out the waxed canvas. And you notice this waxed canvas has been folded, so it has a little, few little creases in it. That's not a big deal. They can actually be worked out with a, uh, a heat gun or an air dryer. Now we're going to place this over the top with the numbers facing up. And because it's got glue on it, all the patterns will stay beautifully in place. So I'll start kind of at the center, making sure the pattern is on our fabric and start smoothing out all of the wrinkles. So a second way to just make sure the pattern doesn't move is to just use pins, but uh, we glued it. So now we can use our scissors and we want to cut right on the black line uh, to cut out each one of these patterns. So we're going to do this and, and show you what's next. After using the pattern and cutting your wax canvas to size, it's time to score the wax canvas. We're going to take one and take off the pattern. Then we're going to take our clear acrylic ruler and we're going to lightly score on the short edges two inches up so I can see through the clear acrylic ruler. I'm going to use an awl. Now you don't want to press too hard because there's no, it'll transfer to the back side. But it's not a big deal if it does because it still comes out with a hot uh, a heat gun or an air dryer. So we have a little score here so we can eventually hem up to that score. We're going to flip it over here. There is no right side or wrong side to this fabric. So you don't worry about what side you're putting it on. It doesn't matter. Score this right here. Okay, and then we're going to set that aside. We're going to grab pattern number four. And we're going to do the same thing to its edge with the triangles on the uh, side here. You can see those triangles uh, two inches up and score it. And then we're going to do the same thing to pattern number five. So now we've grabbed pattern two and three and we will score this uh, in the same manner. Let me get two off of here. So what we're going to do with these uh, squares is we're going to mark one inch, or we're going to score, I should say, with an awl. You can also use a screwdriver for this, a small screwdriver, around the all sides to one inch. And we're going to do that to the uh, second pattern as well. We're going to create the hems on the pocket and sew the top edge. That's next. So first we're going to do a hem on this side and this side. doesn't matter because it is a square, but you want to do it directly opposite of the sides. And we're going to hem to that line that we struck or that we scored on the wax canvas. Notice that it folds beautifully. No reason to use double-sided tape. We're uh, just lining it up to that line. Once you have two opposite sides done, then come down and we'll just call this the bottom side. We'll score up to there. The top side we're going to have a uh, double hem. So I score to that. Now this we're going to call the top side. Doesn't have a real top side, but this is what I'm doing here to indicate that it's the top side because it's going to have that double hem. Score it there and then we score one, or we fold. I'm sorry, not score, we're, we're folding to create our double hem. Okay, so we have a double hem here, single hems on the side. And then we're going to do the same thing to the second one. 
Okay, when you create these folds, you'll notice that the corners stick out, and I don't necessarily like that. Now, you can fix that if you want to open this up and you want to be really particular about making sure that it folds so that the folds don't show. But a little, little good trick, see that, that looks pretty good there. A trick that I do is I actually take my scissors and I don't go all the way to the corner. I do a little bit outside the corner, and this reduces the bulk a little bit, but it also makes it so that you don't see that corner as much if it, if it uh, sticks out. Okay, when inserting a hem bob in your bobbin, sometimes when they're brand new, the manufacturer winds them a little bit full. So what I do is if it doesn't spin well as I pull some of the thread off, I'm going to go ahead and thread it through the bobbin case, put it under the spring, and you notice it's not pulling very easily. So I'll pull some of the line or the thread out until it, it comes out easily, like now it's coming out beautifully. So now we're ready to insert it in the machine. And this hem bob we're going to put up here on this spindle and we will thread the machine as normal. Okay, I have uh, some scrap here. We want to set tension, so I just fold it in half to go through two layers, put it underneath the arm of the sewing machine. We're going to sew a straight stitch in six millimeter. Um, and I just want to make sure that everything looks good before I sew my uh, project. So I want to sew a couple inches like we just did and take it out and inspect the stitches. This looks good on the top side and the knot is buried and a little bit visible on the bottom. So that's pretty much perfect. Now I see the tractor marks from the presser foot. Don't worry about that. Those will come out and it also gives the uh, wax canvas a distinguished look. So we're ready to sew. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure the corners are tucked in so we don't see any of the corners and we're gonna only sew the double hem. And I'm gonna put it to the right side of the center foot as my guide here. So the fabric's up against here, the needle's in the center position. I'm gonna bury the needle, hold the trailing threads, and I'm gonna sew forward two stitches and back about two stitches just to lock the machine in, uh, or to lock the stitch in place. Now I'm gonna make sure that I, the crease or the hem doesn't wander on me and I'm gonna sew along this edge. So if you wanna be really precise, turn down the worker bee. I'm gonna to go to half speed here and that way no matter how hard I press on the foot control, it will not go any faster than that. So you can control the speed exactly the way that you desire or that is good for your sewing skills. When I reach the other end, I'm gonna reverse in the same manner like I did at the beginning. And we're gonna do the same thing to the second one. Now it's time to sew those pockets to the main body. Okay, so now we're gonna take the pocket and we're gonna put it on this panel. And uh, I, I like to just mark it at, um, right at the uh, top of the triangle here. And uh, this is 16 inches, so I'll put a little score mark here. And then we can take our pocket and you can actually just fold it directly in half at the bottom and crease it so you can find the center of that pretty easily like that. And then we're gonna position it right here, make sure that our hems are in, in place and we'll sew it. We're not gonna baste it to this. We're just gonna uh, sew it at that location. But we also wanna do the same thing over here because we're gonna put two pockets on. Now you don't have to put two pockets on. You can just put one on if you'd like. But this pocket's great for uh, holding um, some of your accessories and also the guidebook. So we'll put a score there and we'll do the same thing to this one. Here's the center, position that. We're gonna start up here at this corner. So I'm gonna put it in here and again, I'm gonna put it so it's right outside the center foot. And we are going to hold our trailing thread and we're gonna sew in forward a little bit and then in reverse. And we wanna make sure that we uh, secure this well. So I'm gonna do this a couple times to back tack. We're gonna sew down the side. Now, if I wanna slow down the machine again, I turned it up, I'm gonna slow it down to half speed so I can be really precise with the Worker Bee Power Pack system for this Aerite Ultra Ultrafeed sewing machine. We're gonna to come to the corner and we're gonna to try to position the needle in the same spot that it is from the edge that we're sewing along. So right about there should be a good pivot. The needle is buried. I'm gonna lift my foot. I'm gonna pivot on the needle. And even if it's off a little bit, you can see that we're not right at the edge of the foot. I'm gonna keep that consistent uh, distance along this bottom edge here so that that stitch looks nice and straight with the edge of the fabric. 
I'm pressing all the way down on the foot control and I, I won't go any faster than this. If a corner is sticking out, just kind of take your finger and or take a screwdriver and you can kind of poke that in. Um, that way it doesn't show up when you're done. Sorry, my fingers are in the way. When I get to this corner, I'm going to bury the needle in the same manner at the approximate distance from the edge, like I am there. Lift the foot and pivot one more time. And then we'll sew down this side. When I get to the top, I'm going to do some reversing it like we did at the beginning. And then we're going to do the same thing to the pocket on the other side. We're not going to show that. There we go. In this chapter, we're going to sew the ends onto the main body. Now I put the pockets on the side that we had scored. It should have been on the other side, but that's not a big deal. I've already come over here and I've just put my clear acrylic ruler here and I've scored the underside because we want to have the score on the wrong side of the fabric, even though there is no wrong side of the fabric. So that was a mistake I made. I should have put the pockets. I should have made sure the score is on the underside. I did not when I sewed the pockets on. So now this is our inside. Okay, so we have the two side panels. So I'm going to take the smaller one, the one that is not as long, because obviously it's a different shape, and I'm going to just fold it in half here and crease the top here. This time I'm going to put it on the right side. So this is my score mark here. There's no score mark over here. So I want this tag, the Sayrite tag that shows the world that you did it yourself, to be positioned at that center mark right up here at the top on the outside of the fabric. We're going to take this to the machine. Okay, we're just going to put a tacking stitch on here very close to the raw edge of the fabric. Um, this is just so that we don't forget to put the tag on. So I'm just going to reverse once even though it's not necessary. That is not going anywhere. Now we'll sew these assemblies together. Okay, when you sew anything together uh, that is going to be a bag or anything like that, um, the outside surfaces have to face each other. Obviously, this is our pocket. This is our outside surface since the tag is on this side, so this would be like this. This gets walked all the way to this corner over here, and uh, the pattern is uh, perfectly matched up so that the triangle corners should meet. This edge would come up like this and we can take it to the sewing machine and sew a half inch from that edge. I'm going to use the deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide and put it on the half inch mark of the needle plate. The needle's in the center position and we are going to start sewing so that this is uh, perfectly straight going into the sewing machine which means this stitch is going to actually start a half inch from the uh, edge of the corner and we're going to do a little bit of reversing here just to lock the stitch in place. I'm going to sew up to this corner with the edges lined up. I'm going to lift my canvas slightly as I go past the magnetic guide. I'm going to sew past this corner approximately a half inch. Now, do you have to be ex exceptionally uh, precise? You do not. Uh, you can use the reverse lever to position your needle as you roll the balance wheel down and towards you. So I, if I go, do a whole stitch, I'm going to be more than half inch away. So I'm going to put the reverse lever in the middle position, bury the needle, have the needle come up slightly, and then I'm going to lift the foot, pivot on that needle, and you can see it's almost a half inch away. It's a little bit more than a half inch, but it's not going to matter that much. Make sure the edges are lined up as you sew. Now I'm coming to the, the rounded corner. I'm going to turn down the Worker Bee Power Pack system to about uh, a quarter speed so that I can be really precise with this. And what I'm going to do is this panel is always going to stay straight, so we're going to feed it in straight, and this panel is going to start to roll, but I'm going to make sure it's lined up directly across from the needle as I sew. So I'm going to pull this panel over. Watch. So see how I'm pulling the panel? Don't worry about wrinkles. What you're trying to do is you're trying to just match up the raw edges as you sew. See, we have great slow speed control with this package. Okay, so now I'm pretty much back to the straightaway. Now we're sewing through that tag. Don't have to worry about putting it in there. Now we're coming to the second corner and we're just going to repeat that same process here with it. Just move the fabric up to that corner. If you get off too drastically, 
but do expect wrinkles when you go around these corners because the fabric has to shrink up. Okay, so now we're sewing down to this corner. Now, don't worry if your corner is a little bit off. See, it's a slight bit off here. It's not going to make a, a big deal. It, if it's off at all, it just means that you pulled on one panel more than the other when you were rounding your corners. But uh, we're close enough here. I'm going to get to that corner about a half inch away from that corner, which I think is right about there. Bury the needle, lift the foot, pivot around, match up these, lower it. I'm going to turn up my machine here and then do a little bit of reversing. And there we go. This is our score line, which means this is the wrong side of the fabric. The score line is not really visible here, so this is the right side of the fabric. Obviously, our pockets are here, so this one would go on like this. So what you want to do is you want to roll this to this corner here. And in this scenario, we have a triangle here and we have a triangle here with a point here. Ignore this. This is going to be matched up to this right here. So start there at that, at that uh, corner so that that is lined up. Okay. So we're going to put this in the machine, lining up that corner like so. Mm -hmm. We're going to sew it straight from there. I'm going to do a little bit of reversing just to make sure that the stitch doesn't pull out. And we're going to sew up to this corner. Same process. Lift a little bit, go about a half inch in. Right about there, bury the needle, lift the foot. And we're going to sew around this in the same manner that we sewed the other one. Lower the foot. Don't ever forget to lower your foot or you'll cause all kinds of problems. So now this is a little bit trickier because you have uh, one side sewing on. So you have to kind of uh, keep your fabric nice and flat. So let's just show this. As we sew it, we'll show it. Get it? Coming up to this corner here. I'm gonna have to pull here on this panel, but I don't, I try, I want to try not to pull the fabric because you can actually stretch this fabric and then your, your uh, last triangle won't be exactly the same. So when you're rounding the corners, try to move it without pulling on the fabric. Allow the wrinkles to take place. Just make sure you don't sew the wrinkles in. So there we go. So we're around that corner. Now this last corner will be the one that's a little bit trickier because we have to pull all this bulk around with it. So it's not just pulling a, a single panel, it's pulling the entire assembly around this corner. See how this, this whole assembly is lifting up as I do this? Uh, that's going to be necessary. But as long as you lift up that assembly, look at that, we went around that corner beautifully. Now let's see if, how well this matches up. Yeah, it's not too bad. We're a little bit off, don't be alarmed by that. Uh, as long as you're close, that's all that's important. So let's sew to that corner. Right there, and then we'll lift, turn it around. I don't even have to lift the foot for this. There's, the, there's where the corner stops. So what we'll do is we'll do uh, some reversing right there, and that's done. Before we turn the cover right side out, we're gonna create hems along the bottom edges. And we've already scored the material, so I'm gonna start with uh, one of these long sides here, and I'm gonna fold the fabric. I'm gonna just push this back so you can kinda see it, but it's better just to lay it out flat like that. I'm gonna fold the fabric up to that score, and crease it well. Now you can use uh, pins here or you can use uh, wonder clips, anything like that if you want, but I like to just score it and keep it in that position like that. So that side's done. We're gonna flip it around. So we're gonna flatten out this next side here. 
like that and do that here with the other long side. So this is a single hem. I'm leaving the edges raw. It's not going to be a big deal because the canvas doesn't really, the wax canvas doesn't really unravel. Now let's, let's discuss this corner a little bit. What I like to do is I like to lay it flat like this. You can also lay it like that, but I, I like to just lay it flat like this and then force the hem and see how that kind of just folds up like that. So this would be folded over like that and that creates a pretty nice looking corner on the underside. Now we're going to come over here. Now notice there's excess fabric. We left that excess fabric so that you could find the corner. What I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off that excess fabric here and it, you'll also have excess fabric here. Trim it off so it's pretty much straight with the edge of that fabric here. And then we're going to cre crease this one to make a one inch hem here as well. Okay, always work on your corner to make sure that your corner is not sticking out. You can always just kind of uh, make it neat before you sew it. It looks good right here. So I'm going to take us over. The deluxe five and a half inch magnetic guide is still on the half inch mark. I'm going to position this so it's about a half inch from this edge of the fabric too, so that our stitch starts at a half inch. Lower the foot. Now I didn't measure. If you want to be precise, you can measure, but it's not that crucial. I'm going to uh, sew here, do a little bit of reversing. I'm going to make sure that my hem's laying flat and um, sew along this edge. When I get to the corner, what I'm going to do, make sure the hem looks good. If, if I need to pull this in, I can do that. If it's a wax canvas, it actually uh, folds beautifully like that. When I get to this corner, I'm going to stop sewing a half inch short of the other side. So where's a half inch? Right about... That's a little bit more than a half inch, but it'll be sufficient. I'll come over here, rotate on the uh, buried needle like we talked about. See how I'm off? It's not a big deal. I'm just going to straighten it up. Now I'm, I'm good again. Make sure the hem's in the right spot. When we get to the beginning, we'll just do some reversing again, and that'll complete the sewing. Okay, so the bag is completed. Now we're going to turn it right side out and see how it looks. We have this rounded part looking good. You want to just flatten out this one part around the perimeter. It kind of creates like a brim on a hat. In this chapter, we're going to show you how to remove the marks on the wax canvas. This is a step I typically don't do. It's an optional step. So this is a heat gun. You can also use a hairdryer but see some of these score marks and the tractor marks from the presser foot. You can actually hold this over it. Now you don't want to heat it too much, but you can see the wax kind of spreads out and it kind of hides that. And you can also use your fingers as you're doing it and see all that, those marks come out. But I actually like the beat up look of wax canvas. So that's what I like. And all those wrinkles from when we shipped the fabric folded, notice that they're not even recognizable, mainly because it just wrinkles on its own. It looks classic that way. So this is how she goes on. She's going to fit a little bit tight, which is what we want. And then the edge just fits over, so you've got a beautiful dust cover. And the reason this flap is over here is if you have it in the carrying case, which we'll show next, because this covers the carrying case hole when you flip it around. Order the Ultrafeed Sewing Machine Dust Cover Kit from Sayerite today. Coming up next is a materials and tools list. The items in the materials list are included in the kit. The tools list is not. Those items can be ordered from Sayerite as well. For more free tutorial videos, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.